And now for a look at some of the other big headlines tonight. No disciplinary action for the Bear County Sheriff's deputy who tased an unarmed refugee at a local children's shelter. The nonprofit news organization Reveal obtained video in June showing a deputy tasing the minor and calling him names. The boy didn't speak English. Now, Reveal says that it received a, a copy of the internal affairs investigation that concluded the deputy followed protocol. Case had attempted to get answers from Bear County Sheriff Javier Salazar, but we didn't get a response. Now, the San Antonio Fire Department is very busy. Just last year, there were 12 deadly fires, but this year alone, there have already been five of them just in our area. It's frustrating. It's heartbreaking that these fatalities that we've seen this week have all been preventable. The San Antonio Fire Department says the older population and the people who are mobility impaired are least likely to be able to escape the house fires. So they're encouraging people to practice escape routes before something like this happens. And you're going to have a chance to vote on a $1.2 billion bond program. For the first time, that bond includes money for affordable housing, public art, Streets and drainage projects and a new police substation on the city's south side are also part of that proposal. Voters are going to see the bond on the May 7th ballot. And that's a look at your Nightbeat News Flash. It's official San Antonio. The stock show and rodeo is here. It is underway. But we still have plenty of fun to get to before these two weeks are over. Our Lisa Barrera seemed to be enjoying day one, at least from what I could tell. She joins us now live with the very latest. All right, Alicia, I hope you had fun. It's time to let down your hair, San Antonio. Day one of the rodeo kicked off with the stars of this show, and that's the teens part of the junior livestock show. But if you're headed here this year, you really want to take a look at the map because there's an entirely new layout and some favorites like Bustin in the barn make a return for the little buckaroos. You'll find that near the food court, but also one of the biggest changes is the warm up arena. It's front and center to the left of the Freeman, and I can tell you the kids are going to love that area. Know that the grounds are open every day from 8 a.m. to 11 p.m. and tickets start at just $5 for fairground. And of course, night one of the rodeo was off off to a good start also because of the competitors and of course right now the show with Mr. Toby Keith reporting Alicia Barrera KSAT 12 News Let's Rodeo San Antonio that's right we got ludicrous coming too lady a I Luda. think it's gonna be a good stuff all right you were, you were right like now. fangirling <laughs> over the lineup Listen, they've got good people this year Wade Bowen I'm got going a to Wade live Bowen. camera <laughs> I am going 50. to Wade Bowen 55 degrees right now, looking pretty good out there. Uh, so here's the thing. It's perfect weather right now, but mm -hmm. we're going to see some changes this weekend. Yes, we are. You'll notice some changes on Saturday. First thing Saturday morning, you'll notice the changes outside. So our headlines comfortably warm again tomorrow. I mean, we're talking mid 70s, even 80 degrees closer to the Rio Grande. Saturday morning before sunrise, that's when the cold front hits. So you're going to wake up to the changes out there. Windy and cooler. This isn't going to be as strong as some of our previous cold fronts, though, but there's some stuff you'll have to plan around. So let's get right to it. First today, 39 this morning, 72 in the afternoon, below average to start. Then during the peak heating of the day, a little above average, making it up to 72. Record high, by the way, 88. Right now we're at 57, dew point of 31, still that fairly dry air in place. And you're not going to notice any humidity back in the air until middle of next week. By Wednesday, I anticipate a little hint of humidity in the air. Bandera now at 44 along with Helotus, Bulverde as well. 60 in Canyon Lake, that seems like an error, but that's the reading we're getting. 50 in New Braunfels and 54 Stinson and Divine. Still 60 Del Rio and Laredo. So high temperatures tomorrow, well into the 70s, as I mentioned before, even 80 degrees Del Rio, Eagle Pass, locations closer to the Rio Grande. But then by Saturday, we're going to spend most of the day in the 50s with an afternoon high temperature of about 58 degrees, but we quickly rebound uh, thereafter. So by Sunday, we'll be back in the 60s. Our next cold front, it's off to the north. It's part of the system that's been dropping in from Canada. Not a very strong system, but it's going to have enough cold air to just clip us with that cold air mass and give us some noticeable changes. So future cast taking us through time tomorrow. Another day of full sunshine. 
by Saturday morning. That's when the cold front drops in and it could kickstart just a few showers here and there about a 10 to 20% chance and even higher odds, maybe 30% right along the Gulf coastline. But overall, I think a fairly dry front, just some clouds to start the day on Saturday. The main element and factor with this front is going to be the wind. I mean, check out the wind gusts. This is what we're expecting. Not much of a breeze tomorrow, maybe some gusts to about 15 miles per hour. Saturday, that's when we've got gusts up to 40 miles per hour. So you'll notice the gusty winds combined with some cooler temperatures. Most of the day spent in the 50s during Saturday afternoon. Tomorrow, though, beautiful 42 in the morning, 75 by the afternoon. Saturday, there you have it. 58 for the high, windy. A bit cooler, of course, and then we rebound as we get into Sunday and Monday. It's going to be cool in the mornings. I mean, Sunday, Monday mornings in the mid upper 30s, but by the afternoons back in the 60s to 70s. And by the way, next week, Wednesday, Thursday, we have a few slight rain chances there. There is the chance and the hope that we could see better odds. We'll keep you updated. By the way, I wanted to thank you, Adam, for changing your shoes uh, <laughs> after you came back from the rodeo and was at the livestock barn. I appreciate that. They are in the garage. Let's put it that way. Okay. Uh, all that's what I think. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Yeah. All right. Greg Simmons now in the house. There's a lot of comings and goings with yeah. Spurs. Yeah, had to be the busiest Spurs trade deadline I've ever seen yeah. in the pop era today. And when we come back, there was a lot of wheeling and dealing. We call it a frenzy on the final day of the deadline. And Derek White is one of those who is gone. And how about this? Micah Parsons played hurt during the entire season. Coming up. Happens, happens. I mean, we understand it's a business at the end of the day, but um, I mean, we love everybody in this locker room and um, like having everybody around. All right, less than 24 hours after he said those words, Derek White is no longer a member of the Spurs in Big Board Sports. Actually, headed to Boston. Oh, the Spurs are normally quiet on trade deadline today, but not today. The Silver and Black were in the frenzy with the biggest surprise. Starting guard Derek White is gone. White was traded to Boston Celtics or forward Josh Richardson, shooting guard Romeo Langford, and a first round pick this year, projected one to four. The Spurs have decided that building for the future, gathering as many as three potential first round draft picks this year. White was in his fifth season with the Spurs, started all but one game when he played this season. Obviously, you'd want everybody to stay around, and um, we just continue to work and build and stuff that we worked on since training camp. But, um, I mean, it's a business end of the day, and whatever they feel is right, they're going to do. And um, But, obviously, we'd like to everybody to stay around and just keep, keep building. All right, here's a look at that Spurs Celtics trade. The Spurs will get Josh Richardson, Romeo Langford, first round draft pick that is protected in 2022 this year. And the Celtics received Derek White. Also gone are two bigs, power forward Thaddeus Young, center Drew Eubanks, and a second round draft pick this year in exchange for Toronto Raptors, Ron Drogges, and a projected first round draft pick as well. No, protected, I should say. Eubanks has been with the Spurs since 2018, was signed as an undrafted free agent. Young was part of the DeMar DeRozan sign and trade deal that sent DeRozan to the Chicago Bulls in August of 2021. And Goran was was a 20-08 second round draft pick by the Spurs who was expected to have his contract bought out by the Raptors in the process. Here's a look at that deal. Goran Drogic in a first round draft pick 2022. That's also protected. The Raptors received Thaddeus Young, Drew Eubanks, and a second round draft pick as well. But the biggest trade of the day has been the deal between the Brooklyn Nets and the Philadelphia 76ers. The Nets are sending James Harden and Paul Millsap to the Sixers in exchange for Ben Simmons, Seth Curry, and Andre Drummond and two first round picks. The deal satisfies both Harden and Simmons, who have wanted off the respective teams. Our San Antonio Spurs have tipped off their rodeo road trip with a 105 to 102 loss. I should say 105 192 loss to the Cavs in Cleveland. The one bright spot that came out of that was a play of Zach Collins. Now, this was just his second game back since foot and ankle injuries have kept him sidelined since 2020 and made the most of it. Collins started off aggressive to get the Spurs out to their early lead, finding his teammates with his three assists to go along with his five points and 18 minutes of action. And big on the boards as well with seven rebounds and 15 points in his first two games back. I uh, just play hard, play hard, bring energy. Um, you know, I, I need to finish better than pain. You know, I, I can, there's a lot of things I can do better, but I, you know, my ankles continuing to feel even better and better since I've been playing. So that that's also a good feeling too. So that gives me confidence to go out there and do that stuff. And they resume their rodeo road trip tomorrow in Atlanta at 630.
Pro Football Coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Mike DeParsons revealing that he played the entire rookie season injured. Parsons told Bleacher Report he hyperextended his knee in training camp with the host of the Rams, and it bothered him the entire 2021 season. But you wouldn't know it by his stats. He had 13 sacks played and started in 16 games, missing only one due to COVID protocols. He made the Pro Bowl and All-Pro First Team. Bull riding is back at the San Antonio Rodeo next. Funeral services for legendary broadcaster Gary DeLong will be held tomorrow afternoon. Gary passed away this past Sunday from COVID-related illnesses at the age of 88, but his family is asking that everyone who would like to attend Gary's celebration of life tomorrow wear bright colors in honor of his trademark plaid sports coats that he would be wearing during his 28 years on the air at Ken's TV. The Emmy Award winner and San Antonio Sports Hall of Fame member was also best known for his high school football broadcast for over 60 years. Here's a look at his celebration of life tomorrow, 1.30 at Oak Hills Church on IH2. Funeral services for another legend, Buddy Meyer, the former St. Mary's basketball player, coach, athletic director, and San Antonio Hall of Fame member, will be held starting this Sunday. Buddy passed away last week following emergency surgery at the age of 82. Here are his funeral services at St. Matthew Catholic Church on Wurzbach. Sunday will be the rosary at 730, Monday the mass at 10 a.m. Turn tonight at San Antonio Rodeo with Bullfighters Cody Webster and Chuck Swisher, and they would earn their money tonight, especially with Coleman Hansey, who needed their help right out of the gate. Watch this. He's down quickly. He gets stepped on right there, and he staggers off while Cody and Chuck distract the bull so Coleman can crawl to the gate where he needed medical attention. Watch again. He goes down right out of the gate. The bull steps on him. Luckily, he's wearing a helmet. Ugh. Two winners tonight. First stage, Steel Kimsey, the reigning world champion in bull riding, scores an 85 on board Butterbean. But so does Ernie Corson Jr. on Show Glow. Nice way to start the first night of the San Antonio Rodeo. Look at that. And boy, I tell you what, those bullfighters, it's just incredible the work they do, and they really risk their life every night to save those Cowboys because nine times out of ten, the bull's going to win. Yeah. Not the cowboy. Yeah. And, and the best thing about those bullfighters, there's no hesitation. No, not at all. I mean, they, they're in there. And those guys, Cody and Chuck, are two of the best in the business, and they're back every year. Yeah. Thanks, Greg. You got it. Ouch is all I can say. Just can't get over <laughs> that footage. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. Welcome back. New numbers out today on just how high inflation rose in America, and it's actually worse than a lot of economists thought. Americans have certainly been feeling the pinch from everything with groceries to cars, housing. Yeah, President Joe Biden, though, acknowledges the hardship on households and says he's optimistic the numbers will ease up by the end of the year. Chris Wynn has details. Across the country, prices are rising faster than they have in nearly four decades, causing more anxiety among many Americans, including small business owners who are trying to manage. For me, it's just hurting us more as a business individual than, than uh, you know, uh, uh, having it passed to them and hurting them more, you know, because the way things are. The U.S. Consumer Price Inflation Index rose 7.5% over the past year before seasonal adjustments. That's the steepest climb in prices since the year ending in February of 1982, according to data from the Bureau of Labor Statistics. I'm going to work like the devil to bring gas prices down, which I'm going to working to make sure that we keep strengthening the supply chain to bring the cost of energy and everything else and the goods that come to America down by helping the ports 24 seven by changing a whole range of things. Prices went up across the board last month, including for housing, furniture, used cars, and health care. The increases even worse than economists had predicted. But the president's advisors maintain the situation will improve this year. What the forecasts tell you is that the job market should stay tight and get even tighter, supporting wage growth while inflation decelerates, while it slows. Relief that can't come soon enough for consumers. Hopefully they will understand because this is not just happening to our facility, it's happening all over. In Washington, I'm Chris Wynn. Now, the Senate passing one of the largest workplace reforms in decades today. The Ending Forced Arbitration of Sexual Assault and Sexual Harassment Act does exactly what it says. It basically forbids employers from forcing workers with sexual misconduct claims into arbitration. So instead, this measure now allows them to file lawsuits. The bill passed the House with a sweeping bipartisan majority of 335 to 97 earlier in the week. We told you it passed the Senate, so now it's going to go to President Biden's desk. 
The CDC is revising its opioid prescription guidance. The last time new guidance was issued was in 2016. That's when the agency took a hard line on it in response to an increasing number of fatal overdoses on drugs like oxycodone. Well, the new guidelines take a softer approach. They indicate clinicians should use more judgment over adhering to rigid requirements. They're encouraging doctors to consider pain management techniques like over the counter pain relievers, physical therapy and acupuncture. A draft of the new guidelines is open for public comment until April 11th. Now, some more changes are in the works near the Alamo. The Ripley's tourist attraction, along with two other tours and businesses, will terminate their leases in the Woolworth and Palace buildings later this year. The space can then be used for an Alamo museum and a visitor center. Now, we have the article for you online on KSAT.com. And before we go, check this out. A headline all the way from Hawaii, a dog's outing in a forest left him trapped in a 25 foot hole just outside Hawaii's Volcanoes National Park. You see him down there? The dog's owner only found it because the dog was wearing GPS. The 16 year old boy couldn't get to him, but a stranger walked by, was able to help the rescuer able to make his way down that hole and pick up the pup. Wow. Without GPS, there is no way they would have located yeah, that but dog. Look at where he fell in yeah. between. That's crazy. Yep. Wow. That's Absolutely. A, that's a tough terrain there as well. That's the thing. Yeah. All right, so tomorrow morning, generally lower 40s, but you know, some upper 30s here and there and some nooks and crannies, including Uvalde about 39, 41 Pleasanton, 43 tomorrow morning in Canyon Lake, 42 around San Antonio, uh, Bernie about 41. You get the idea. Then tomorrow afternoon, a few degrees warmer, mid 70s, even some upper 70s south of San Antonio. You get to the Rio Grande and we're talking 80 degrees. But that's going to come to a screeching halt on Saturday. Saturday is when our next cold front hits and it's going to be hitting us before the sun rises. So you'll wake up and you'll feel some changes out there. We're not talking drastic changes, just noticeable changes. Cooler temperatures will be in the 50s most of the day on Saturday and we'll have some wind gusts up to 40 miles per hour at times. So that's what you really have to plan for. It's still very low humidity. It could. I know we're at the end of mountain cedar season. It was randomly high today. But it, it, Saturday could kick it up again a little bit. One last try, usually by Valentine's Day, Monday. Mountain Cedar's out of here. And actually, temperatures are going to rebound nicely. We'll be back in the 60s by Sunday, and then we'll be up to 70 degrees on Monday. Now, next week, we have a few slight rain chances at the moment. Right now for Wednesday and Thursday, there is the potential that we could actually see some of those chances rise. It depends on exactly how our upper level pattern decides to set up, but at least there's a little bit of hope for the potential of what could turn into some potentially decent rain for some folks. Here's our wind forecast and notice tomorrow some wind gusts, maybe 10 to 15 miles per hour, but by Saturday, wow. we spike up to 40 miles per hour and actually by Tuesday and Wednesday of next week, a stronger wind coming off the Gulf of Mexico, and that's going to give us a little hint of humidity back in the air by the middle of next week. It's going to feel a little weird to briefly have some mugginess back. Maybe you blow the mountain cedar out of here. It should. I mean, it should be low by now. Usually we're wrapped up by Valentine's Day. Yeah. Thank you, Adam. Thank you so much for joining us. GMSA starts at 430 tomorrow morning. Have a great night.